we've got a very special treat for me personally and for Leroy and for I hope for all of you viewers because we're being joined by a very good friend of mine, Dave Whitlock, who's going to tie some bass bugs for us. Dave, you and I have been friends for over 25 years and we never get to see enough of each other, so okay. it's great to have you with us. Well, it's wonderful being here with you, Dave. Uh, of course, I'm not sure about Leroy here, but... Uh, <laughs> well, I didn't know you guys behaved pretty well. I didn't yeah. know you were either 25 years oh, old. Oh, yeah. And you're well, it's, well, it's all an act, you know. I see. Yeah, right. oh, yeah. Okay. We're, we're not just handsome faces, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. Uh, one thing that we're going to do, this first fly we're going to tie is one that I've tied myself or tried to tie. I've seen it on your videos, I've read about it in your books, and I've fished with it. It's a killer bass bug, and that's the most wit hair bug. Yeah. So tell us what you're going to use to tie it. Well, obviously the common material is, uh, the most important material, is you know, different colors of deer hair. This is just the hair off the body of a deer. But also, for the tail, we're going to use some of this hackle. Uh, I've got a yellow variant, an orange, and then a nice uh, brown uh, hackle here. And then also for that tail leg part, I'm going to use uh, uh, some of this crystal hair. Crystal hair, mm -hmm. Or crystal flash, as you want to call it. Uh, and then I'm going to use some, some nylon that uniquely for a weed guard as well as a body foundation. And then a special hook that has a wide gape for this a little bit better. Yeah, it looks bass. like some rubber legs. Yeah, we've got some rubber legs here, and those are, you know, for the. For now, the as far as your bug goes, I suppose the, the viewers can tie it in any color combinations they well, want. Well, that's what works well. You can tie it on literally whatever you think it might be imitating. Yeah. But this is just a good general color attractor. I just call it a, a would-be pattern. Right. So, so you're going to use about a number six uh, uh, stinger hook, or one yeah. of these wide gap yeah, bass hooks? Yeah, it's a hooks. wide gate bass hook, yeah. And, I'm gonna, and I like to use the, uh, the nickel-plated one, too, mm -hmm. Dave, because that two things. Uh, the the nickel-plating creates kind of a, a, a mirror camouflage but also you can use it in brackish and salt water too. And these bugs okay. are quite good for, for tarpon and snook. Yeah, and, and that wide gap water. is important to keep the hooking qualities with that big hair bug. Yeah, definitely. When you have a large bulky head, you need that, the, the gape to come well below that head. Okay, so. well, let's, let's tie it. All right, first of all, before I start, let me just show you something here. You see what I put on this hook here? That's nylon, uh, pretty much yeah. tied and welded to the hook, and I call it my body base foundation. Oh, I see. And this, when I put this on, I'm going to show you in a moment how to do okay. it. When I put this on, it keeps that hair from turning on the hook. Ah, which is the, very important. Yeah, and the other thing, it is, the other thing is that the weed guard comes around here, a snag guard comes around uh -huh. so that you can pull the hook over mm -hmm. objects like lily right. pads and logs. And that's basically a hard, heavy monofilament. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard type monofilament, and it's yeah. about two-thirds the diameter of the hook wire. And what does uh, that make it in? Pound well, test, uh, of well, inch, thousands so. of inch on this particular one is about twenty-two thousand. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, let's do it. Okay. Got a lot of neat things I want to show you guys Great. here on it because well, we're first of all, the most important thing is to get this barb off because right. uh, uh, you want to be able to hook a fish real well and you want to be able to unhook you real well if you right. happen to get it. Especially so, if you're fishing with Leroy, that gets to be more important. Yeah. So I'm going to just on. take and put this. Uh, uh, Barb right in the jaws of the vise and bend it down. That's a perfect okay. thing rather than reaching for the yeah. for the uh, pliers and do it. And it's good to bend it down before you start tying because once in a while when you bend the barb down, the hook the point will break. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to do that on Wait, a no. completely finished fly. I've done that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> fly. Uh, the next thing I want to do is something kind of orthodox. To get that weld to work real well, I just take a, a thin a, a file and and I actually roughen the hook shank a little I bit. See. Hmm. And this will make the thread and the glue and the nylon hold better to it. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm gonna replace that little bit of nickel that I took off yeah. with cement anyway, so it's gonna hold. Well, that, that's well. a good point, I've never seen that I've done before. I've never seen that done Boy, either. it works like a charm on any hook. The next thing is that I'm gonna take some super glue, and this is just kind of the, the viscous thick type, we call it Zappa Gap, and I'll just uh -huh. run that right along the shank. Okay. And that's going to weld this thread, sure which is a heavy nylon thread. And I like to use white for most of these bugs. I'm just going to wrap it from the bend. Is that about a size 6 aught or what? No, this is a 3 aught. You really have 3 aught. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm going to run it right up to behind the eye of the fly. And that with the, uh, with the super glue will really weld that thread. The next thing I do is I'll take a loop of this nylon and I just double it like, like a little horseshoe and I lay it on the right and left hand side just about an eye length behind the eye and I wrap it down. Well, now it 
obviously hasn't taken long for that uh, cement to dry. Your fingers would be well, glued to the hook. Well, <laughs> the, the thing is, it dries rather slow and it's viscous, so it doesn't trap you like regular ah, super glue. Okay, so uh, make sure you get the, yeah. the thicker because yeah. yeah, you can see the the zap a gap coming yeah. through the wraps ah, of the thread. Well, I can't see it from yeah. here. Now the next thing is that I I've got this wrapped to the right and the left hand side of the thread. You see how that fits? Mm -hmm. Not up and down or twisted together, mm -hmm. because it, you lose a lot of efficiency doing that. Then when I get about to the point there, I cut the, uh, the shorter strand off, and then I cut the longer strand off, but I lay it on top of the hook, and this forms another foundation oh, for, the, sure. for the tails of the bug, makes a wider uh -huh. little sure. edge there, shoulder, and then it's going to also make the weed guard. So I wrap this down to about halfway into the bend of the hook, Okay. and then return the thread back. Now while, while I've got this piece of model film in here, I'm going to go ahead and size the length of the guard that I need. So I stick it through the eye, bring this around, and this loop needs to travel, be, become, be down about half the hook gape. So this is a half inch hook gape. This should be about a quarter inch below the hook point. Okay. And I just kink it a little bit with my, uh, with my fingers, and I cut that off there. Then I take a pair of pliers and flatten this area that's going to go through the eye of the hook, and that makes it so much easier to wrap down, you wouldn't believe. Hmm. And also, it won't pull out. Then I it just placed back there. Next thing I do is just take a little bit more zap gap and just run over the tops of those threads. And that wells that, that filament to the hook. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to take almost a pair of pliers and really, really crank on it to get it to with it. And you can do that on, on a bass bug, you can do that on a nymph, you can do it on any fly where you want the body to sit really firm on the fly. Mm -hmm. So it's not just for this bug. Good. Now, let's get the busy time. First of all, I want to add just a few strands of crystal flash, and I'm using yellow here. Now, you say few. Do you think people use too much of that at times? Oh, yeah, you can. Okay. I mean, you know, one thing about it, it makes the fly look so good, just a little bit of sure. it, boy, hey, let's put some more on there. <laughs> yeah. And I've, I've seen fish actually be afraid of it. But I'm adding about, about 10 strands on here, and I tie it right to the top of the hook shank, and I put just back about one and a half hook shanks long. I don't want to get too far back, but just about like that. And that's just to add a little bit of flash and attraction. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to put a little bit in the skirt, too. The next thing I want to do is on my right and the left hand side of, of this shoulder that I built up there with the nylon, I want to add these hackles. And so I'll take the yellow ones first and I trim them to where they're about the same general length as the, uh, as the crystal here, maybe a tiny bit shorter. And without stripping the, the quill, I just take and lay that on the right side here, make one or two loose wraps and tighten it so that the concave side flares out and then lay it on the other side. If I do that on the right and left hand side of the hook with that nylon filament like that, they just sit there just as if they were, uh, you know. No, no, why don't you strip on. the fiber off of that button? Because if I do that, it's hard for, for it to really get a hold. It's a lot easier, harder to tie down because really? that, that, hard, uh, that hard stem wants to rotate around. Oh, but with, the, with okay. the fibers on there, you don't have to do that. Okay. And remember too, these are big old juicy bass flies, and so we can have them a little bit bulk, bulkier anyway. So there's that. Then I, I want to do next is just follow that same pattern, except that each time I'm going to take some orange, I add, put these on just, oh, I'd say two thread lengths in front of the yellow, and that way they separate just a little bit, because I don't want them to all kind of stick together. Mm -hmm. And that makes the, uh, the legs or the tail, depending on how you, what you think this is going to be, uh, out just a little bit better. Hmm. So we've got those on there and then I'm just going to take the two uh, furnace or brown hackle and do the same thing as that. Well so that's we a couple of neat tricks right there. Don't strip the stem and put them in slightly ahead of each other. Of the one underneath. And, and they separate yeah. nicely. Now if they turn a little bit out. you can just kind of twist them around like that and make them mine. You can see how how that works. Mm -hmm. Okay then lay them on the other side. Uh, also, there's just a little bit of zappa gap left here, so it's, so it's binding these down nicely, but I still want to, because sunfish as well as bass pull on that, those mm -hmm. legs a lot, and they, you, don't want, you don't want to lose them, so I'll just take a little bit of, uh, of this rubber flexament and, uh, and put yeah, just on the Now, that's the that. stuff that uh, Leroy and I talk about, a rubber-based cement, which oh, is basically so much the, uh, the rubber shoe repair stuff yeah. thinned with toluene. Yeah, basically it, yeah. yeah. The thing is that this stuff, you can, you can add, 
you can pull and, and move material around and it won't break off or, mm -hmm. or come out. It really holds better. So I'm going to take now the for the skirt area, again, one of those uh, yellow variant hackles and just wrap it on. And I just fold it a little bit and wrap it around. Now this does a couple of things. It adds another action to the fly, a little bit more subtle action in the tail. It hides the hook. And also it makes a nice junction between the deer hair and the and the and the mm -hmm. and the tail. So I take the that and I just repeat that same color pattern again. Yellow and so orange. So you're doing one in front of the other, you're not really mixing them together. No, but they'll kinda look mixed together when I finish with them. And just catch that. And I just break that feather off. I don't even think bother about tying it. Tying it, cutting it off. That way I can do it a little bit faster, not quite sure. So. I have never seen this, the fibers not stripped off the quill. That just amazes me. Well, come to Arkansas. We show you a lot of oh, things. Oh, I'm sure <laughs> of that. Yes, sir. Anyway. Well, you know, that's a joke, but I'd love to come down to Arkansas and fish sometime with you. Well, you know, the door's always open oh, down I'd there. We've got a there. beautiful new place. We've got a 10 acre place with a three acre pond in the backyard. Oh, that's neat, man. I bet Big old blue a bass or two in there. Yeah, and what I'm proud of though, though, we have our fly fishing schools there and they have a, and, and we have the students tie a fly and walk right out, out, out of the yeah. classroom and, and literally yeah, within two or three casts yeah. they've got a big fish. And it's usually about a three to five pound channel cat. Oh, look at And, and oh. actually they, they usually tie four or five flies, you know, just yeah. in the hour or so. And they'll lose almost every one of them. Once in a while, if the catfish leave them alone, a big bluegill or bass. Come. Okay, now I've got the uh, what I just call the skirt, and uh, you see how the skirt kind of goes back over the legs. That's why I call it the skirt, and it's a mini skirt too, which mini I skirt. like a lot. I know better. you'd like that. Oh, I yeah. like that so much yeah. better at my age. I tell you. Now, the next thing I want to do is take about eight or ten again of this crystal flash, and I'll show you the neat thing. I'm going to hackle with it, so I'll add a little bit of sparkle right in the hackle. You just lay it straight across the hook shank, like that. You see. And one or two wraps folded into into the hackle, and you see now how whoops it slipped off. See how that goes, Leroy? See, mm -hmm. see that's all blended in, there. and now we've right got a nice around. little sparkle sure. in there. That's yeah. great. And that 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 twinkle to a bass's eye. Yeah. Of course, these work for bass. They work for panfish, uh, snook, tarpon, northern redfish. pike, and bigger. Oh, northern eat those things up like oh, you can't yeah. believe. In fact, the largest northern pike I ever caught, I caught on a fly very similar to this. Yeah. I won't tell you, you wouldn't believe me if I told you the size of it, so I'll just say it's large. Anyway, uh, but uh, the next thing I want to do now is have some fun tie some deer hair. This is one of the things that I guess most people, when you say, okay, it's time to tie deer hair, beads of sweat break oh, out yeah. on their head and stuff. <laughs> yeah. and, and deer hair is very simple to tie. I've gotten better at it since I started watching Leroy do it. Yeah, oh, is but, that right? Uh, yeah. Deer hair always gave me fits. Well, you know, you choose nice, coarse body hair, and, and the, the uh, the main thing is that to choose that good coarse hair, and a lot of a lot of the better material companies now actually sell it as as bug hair or, mm -hmm. or deer hair for tying. And you want to get all of that those shorts out and that little fuzzy stuff out mm -hmm. of there. The next thing is that you decide that if you use the base of it rather than the tips of it for for flaring and, and getting buoyancy, you're better off. Well, it's much more hollow. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is that you notice I've done is I have shortened that hair until it's about half the length it was before. The shorter it is, the easier it is to flare, the easier it is to handle, and easier to see. Next thing is I bring my thread up, you know, just about a, about a quarter of an inch past the, the, the skirt, lay the hair in a clump, and I go around twice loosely, once, twice, and I tighten it just enough to where I can turn loose of it. Now what this does is that, that it allows me now to begin torquing the hair around the hook and I spin it around the hook and then I tighten it. Mm -hmm. So I move the hair around with a torque Completely and then I tighten around. it. You bet. A lot of people try to torque as they tighten and, and the hair won't run around even. Mm -hmm. Now you remind me, this, this was a flat hook shank. That wasn't a round That's slick right. hook shank. Right. We used to tell people when, when we oh taught yeah. deer hair tying, they had to have a slick, flat, mm -hmm. non-threaded hook shank. If you know how to torque that around, doesn't it? That's right. Now, the next thing is I just push that really firmly with my fingers or or a little tool. Some people prefer to use a tool, but I like I like to feel it better. Mm -hmm. And a little tool doesn't let you feel how well it's packed. And then I just take a second bunch. Anytime you're trying to make nice color bands, as this is going to be, if you add two bands uh, of the same color rather than one, just torque that around and tighten it. It works better. It makes it a little smoother. Mm -hmm. 
and then pack it down just as if it, you just. This packing is a real secret. Oh, tool man, yeah. To it get really a dense body into yeah. If you want the bug to last and flow, yeah. yeah. Yes. Now you see how nice that is from the bottom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing is that I'm going to take a, a little bit of brown here. Now, do you right. always go the same color combination? Oh, no, sometimes I vary. In fact, I'm, I think I want to take some black here. I think it'll, it'll, it'll contrast a little bit better for what I want to show you folks here. And I notice you're not using any kind of rubber cement or anything on the hook. Oh, no, if now. you don't, Davey, it just makes such a mess. Yeah. It, it makes a little more durable bug, but, but for me, I just get it all yeah. over everything. Uh, so I'll take some black now and just lay in there. Same thing, one or two wraps around, try not to get the yellow and then torque it around and flare it. Mm -hmm. And the black is so contrasting, I don't need to use quite as much of it as I did the yellow. I think this is a good point that we need to stress again, is that you're torquing it around and then tightening it. You're yep. not trying to do the two together. No, if you do the two together, you don't get to go around either. It, it yeah. will stay on one it's, side or the other. That's right. Which I think most on. people do it the other way and get into the problem. That's right. Uh, and they end, they end up dissatisfied the results and they say, oh, I can't do deer hair. Yeah. And that's just not it at all. So I'll just start again, two wraps around, torque it around, and then tighten it. Mm -hmm. And then just get your fingers and pull it back, fold it back almost like you would have hackle that front mm -hmm. part. And I do get the idea you've done this before. Once or twice. I love to tie fly. Somebody <laughs> said the other day, I, well, they, they like to watch me tie flies because that I had kind of a rhythm about no. it. But it's fun, you know. Oh, it, sure it, it really is. is. It's, uh, uh, now, the next thing I want to do is just to add a little bit of brown up here on the, uh, the body to kind of match the brown of the hackle. Again, just cut that out. And if you pick hair that's really good, you don't have to take a lot of that under fur out. But if, you, uh, if it has a lot of that fuzz in there, you need to get that out of there because mm -hmm. the hair won't flare well mm -hmm. and it also will, will uh, absorb water at a, at a greater rate. And Dave, you see how small the clump of hair is he's putting on? That's another good point. Yeah. Don't Smaller you find that a lot small. of people use way too much? Yeah. yeah, now, they do that for a couple of reasons, I think, is that they want, they want to get the job done as quick as possible, but I think they think using a, a lot bigger hair will float better. Mm -hmm. And instead of using a, a great big bunch, I use two small bunches. Again, mm -hmm. that's the same effect. And it's easier to control. Yeah. Okay, let me get this on here. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to put a little light colored face on here. And that's so we can see it. You know, a lot of times when we're bass fishing, we want to, we want to have, we can either use white, but mm -hmm. I'm going to use this little fluorescent yellow because it'll kind of, it'll kind of blend a little bit better with the, uh, with the whole buzz color. But then you can see it whenever, mm -hmm. you know, when it's floating in the water and all of a sudden it disappears, uh, you know you got a strike or what have you. Because they don't always just come up and slam it. A lot of times they'll just suck it down real easy. Mm -hmm. Now there's the, uh, there's the, the head of it. Now the, the tying essentially is done. But what I want to do now is trim it real quickly and then take and, uh, and put the weed guard on it. It's important. Let me get my scissors here where I can get to them a little better. It's important to cut most of this hair off the bottom so that hook gape is exposed. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, it won't hook well. Even with that wide gap, you still yeah, trim well, it? See, it still needs to come down. Sure. Yeah. Okay. You're because trimming it fairly flat then? Reasonably flat, yeah. Mm -hmm. just, and also, that makes it sit on the water a little mm -hmm. bit flatter too. Then, because you need to decide you want to make this a diver or a popper, we're going to make this one a popper, so I will trim off, essentially, uh, the area around the skirt to a little bit smaller waist area. And that's for two reasons. One, to get the bug to sit like this in the water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because most, of, most things terrestrial and, uh, and aquatic, like frogs or big insects or what have you, uh, turtles, you name it, water snakes, whatever it might be, usually float head up and, and legs down or mm -hmm. tail down. So if you were to make it a diver, what would you do? I would leave that up there and make a point down here. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'd leave a kind of a collar on so it. So as you twitch it, it'd go down and come yeah, back yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. So you have an option, you know, you can do either one. Do you, if you're going to make a diver, do you leave the hair natural? Do you put some cement on it to make it a little more solid? I leave it natural, but a lot of people prefer to, to put some cement on there so mm -hmm. they can get the... the uh, hard finish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and I don't put hardly any collar on a diver. I put just a real small collar because I don't want the wind resistance and I don't want the disturbance on it. 
Now, see, it's pretty close to being right. I just want to go ahead and trim this up here a little bit. And like we've said many times, spinning hair, the problem with spinning hair or trimming hair is you don't know when to quit. <laughs> well, you know, I found a lot of my students, uh, they, they fall so much in love with this, <laughs> with, with this hair, they don't want to cut it off. And they <laughs> anyway, uh, get that down. Now I want to reattach, I want to attach the weed guard. So I put the, the nylon strand right through the, the vice jaws and reattach the thread here. Three or four wraps. And then trim the excess thread, stick this loop in through the, and I wrap it down first on the bottom, Dave. Okay. Oh. And then I make sure I've got it sized right. And then I just bend the uh, the top part of the loop down. But the, you've already flattened it. Yeah, and it makes make it so easy oh, sure. because it's flattened and it just, okay. man, rolls right down. Now, one other little trick I want to show you here. I'm going to, instead of doing a whip finish, I'm going to do a zappa gap finish. And that you just take the zappa gap and you wet the thread with it for about two inches. Pull the hair back so it doesn't get caught in that and just start at the eye and wrap consecutive wraps back. When you get in the hair, make one wrap and stop. And then hold it for about five or six seconds and cut it. And that'll, Without even a half inch. Man, that'll work. This is gone. That's, that's there uh -huh. for, the, for eternity. And that's a little bit easier to do and yeah. a little quicker on that. Now, is that reasonably waterproof, that zap again? Yeah, it's 100% waterproof. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, now, we don't have a lot of time left, but uh, are you going to put eyes on this one? If I've got time. Or why don't you tell us about the eyes and let's not do it? All right. If you eyes get and legs. Possible. Okay, I, well, Oh, sure. the legs, yeah, we've got to. Eyes and legs both. Yeah, all, right. all right. Well, first of all, that I'll just trim two little sockets. Yeah. So there's the two eye sockets in there. They have to be cut in there like right. sockets. Right. And then we take this rubber cement. It's the same kind yeah. of general stuff that you patch your, your running shoes with. Right. If you run. It's very thick. If you don't run, you don't need to patch them. But. And then. You're just putting put it in each socket? Yeah, I put a okay. gob in each socket like that. That's going to have two eyes. Let me take that glue. Okay. Thank you for that one. Then I just take these little doll eyes, these little hollow plastic eyes, and put into each one like that. Uh -huh. And you know, the minute that you put them on there like that, you begin to talk to it, because all of a sudden it becomes yeah. a little Muffet character. Now you can <laughs> buy those eyes at a craft shop? You can buy them at craft shops or fly shops, either one. Mm -hmm. They're very popular nowadays. In fact, I think I was probably the one that kind of introduced them I to the fly fishing world. Oh, yeah. But uh, anyway, there's a, there's a little bug tied with uh, the eyes on it. And then I want to show you one other little quick, quick thing, is that I used to tie that those rubber strands in, mm -hmm. we call the legs. Mm -hmm. And now I use a little loop of nylon on a needle. And I sew them through. I just stick the needle right next to the, uh, the hook. Up above, here. above the shank? Yeah, right above the shank. Put the loop in like that and then take a, one strand at a time. You don't want to, you don't want to rush it too much. Put the, we'll just take this yellow strand here. And you just pull that and sew it through. That. Okay, why don't you rotate that hook All to right. the camera so they can see okay. what you've done. Okay. One see more that? time, you put a, you have a, uh, just a just sew it monofilament through. loop on a needle. Yep. And then you just and stick I, that and through. And I glued the loop uh, on the needle with, with the same zappa right. gap material mm -hmm. so they don't have a big bulky area right. so it pulls through. Then uh, I'll, let me put now a black leg in here or an orange one. But just can again, you do just that in a vertical plane so the camera can watch you do that? Sure. Right through like that. In fact, I'll kind of watch the monitor for a second. You can see it. See the loop go through? Okay. Now, uh, once you get about like that, then you just take, uh, we'll see the orange strand next here. Come on, get off that table. And put this on right through the strand like that. And just pull it. Missed it, Dave. I know. It, it keeps shaking around. Not me shaking. I see and just pull that through too. We're rushing his eyes a little bit. Goop it won't come out like that. Now there's the orange sewed through. Unbelievable. And then I just trim them off, kind of the length that I want them to wiggle. Okay. There's a, you, you can get, you can leave these real long, but if you, do, if, but if you, uh, 
If you leave them too long, they don't have the action. So you don't have to use any cement or anything yeah. to hold them there? They're uh, much you there? Can, you can, if they're sewn through right, they, they do. Usually what I do in order of sequence oil is I'll put a little bit of flex cement on the body, let it dry, and then I'll sew it through that flex cement membrane. And that's the most wet hair bug. Great looking fly, and I know from first-hand experience, the bass love it. Dave and Leroy have produced two 90-minute videos covering new and exciting tips on how to make your fly tying better and more effective. They introduce you to everything you need as a beginner and demonstrate helpful techniques for intermediate tires. Fly Tying Techniques Volumes 1 and 2 are available by calling 1-800-883-0124. Cost of each video is $28.95 plus shipping and handling, or get the two volume set for just $52.95. You can also order the programs in this series. Each 90-minute videotape includes three programs for just $22.95, plus shipping and handling. To order Fly Tying, the Angler's Art Videos and Techniques tapes, call 1-800-883-0124.